Hello, let's look at our second example, a much more difficult one, not a polynomial. And we're going to put all the pieces of the puzzle together and end up with a nice sketch. Our function is y equals the quantity of x plus 1 who is squared divided by 1 plus x squared. All right, pre-calculus concepts. Domain, hmm, nothing's going to stop us from being able to plug in anything to this function. Denominator is never 0 for real numbers, so no. Nah. No, no, no trouble at all. Our domain will be all real numbers. Um, when it comes to asymptotes, the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator. So the ratio of their coefficients ends up as the horizontal asymptote. Uh, y equals 1 is a horizontal asymptote here. Uh, there's no symmetry. Um, the function is neither even nor odd. In the numerator there, when you square that out, you'll have a mixture of even and odd terms. Denominator is even, for sure, but the numerator is um, neither. Okay, all right, and you can't have a slant and a horizontal together, either one or the other. So we have a horizontal, no need to think about a slant. All right, calculus, let's take the derivative. Let's set it equal to zero. Let's find the critical numbers, and then from there, we'll find out where the function is increasing at and where it's decreasing at. And we'll be able to know the nature of any critical points, critical numbers. All right, it's going to require a quotient rule. You can do it. Derivative of the uh, derivative of the numerator multiplied by the denominator. I like to square the denominator first and then bring it up to the numerator. Then I multiply by the derivative of the numerator. Don't worry about trying to multiply that out. Leave it as it is. Pull the 2 down in front. Take it to the 1. And then the derivative of the inside is just a 1. Put a minus sign. Leave the, numerator, uh, leave the numerator alone and multiply by the derivative of the denominator, which is 2x. All right, a bit messy, but we got to be able to make our way through this and be able to know where it's equal to 0 at. So focus your attention on the numerator. Factor out anything that the two terms might have in common. You see a 2. You see an x plus 1. Take that out. What are you left with? A 1 plus x squared from the first term and another x plus 1 term from the second, but uh, there's a minus on that, um, and an x. All right, let's multiply this out. We're trying to find out where it's equal to 0 at. We need to know how does it factor, okay? So we got the two factors already. We have the 2, we have the x plus 1. What we need to know is what's going on with the square bracket. When we multiply out, we actually end up canceling. It's crazy. The x squares terms, they cancel. And you're left with 1 minus x. It's wild. It's all factored. You're ready to know where it equals to 0 at. Where it equals uh, undefined. Uh, it's never undefined. Our denominator is positive. Never 0. All right, so then we can just say, well, equal to 0 when the numerator is equal to 0. So that's going to be at negative 1 or at 1. These are our critical numbers. Take a number line. Chop it up. It will be three intervals. Put these on there. We could t take test points and be able to plug them in. I want you to be able to look at it quickly, though. Um, the denominator is always positive. If this thing is going to change sign, it's going to be from the numerator, who's a parabola. But it's a downward opening parabola. It's a negative x squared. And so uh, a downward opening parabola has the two zeros. And then where you're in between the two zeros, you'll be positive, And on the outside, you'll be negative. All right, great. So we know exactly where the function is increasing at and where it's decreasing at. It's increasing in between minus 1 and 1. It's decreasing on the extremes, negative infinity up to negative 1 and from 1 to infinity. We have a change in increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. That's going to lead to a local minimum. And then it changes again from increasing to decreasing. That's going to lead to a local maximum. Let's go get the y values that go along with these. If you plug a 1 into the function, you'll be able to get out a 2, I believe. And when you plug a um, negative 1 into the function, you'll get out a 0. So that's, that actually ends up as an intercept, an x-axis intercept. You'll be decreasing in between, um, um, increasing in between, and decreasing on the extremes. You have now all of your information that you're going to get out of the first derivative, so you're ready to go to the second derivative. 
Uh, quotient rule again. All right. And so this was our first derivative. Multiply it out. And you end up with the difference of squares though. That works out nice. And so we're going to then take a second derivative. Square the bottom. Bring the bottom up to the top. Take the derivative of the top. You can keep the two. Focus on the inside and have a negative 2x. That'd be negative 4x. Put a minus sign. Leave the top alone. Multiply by the derivative of the denominator, which is bring the 2 down, take it to the 1, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. That's a lot. That's a lot to handle. Factor out what the numerator terms have in common. A negative 4, an x, and one of those 1 plus x squared powers. For your first term, you'll be left with the other 1 plus x squared. For your second term, you will be left with uh, negative 2 times the 1, uh, positive 2, sorry, times the 1 minus x squared quantity. Whew. What a mess. But you're ready. You have it already factored. Negative 4x, the 1 plus x squared. And now you got to deal with in the bracket here. And um, you get a 1 plus x squared plus a 2 minus 2x squared. So no x term at all. You end up with 3 minus x squared. And you can take down one of the powers on the 1 plus x squared in the denominator. You know, if you have a cubic, if you have a quadratic, then you take its derivative down below, you should have a cubic. Okay. Um, let's see here. All right. Uh, we'll be left with uh, 3 minus x squared and a negative 4x. That works out well. Set them equal to 0. Either x is 0 or 3 minus x squared is 0. That's plus or minus rad 3. All right. I think we have what we need. Go ahead to the number line. Let's see here. We gotta be careful here. We gotta plug in test values. I think we should plug in test values. Something like negative 100 will make that outside term positive, but the inside term will be negative. So the product will be negative. Um, down below, you're always positive. I know it's a cube, but it's always a positive inside of that cube. So no need to worry about the denominator. Focus all the attention on the numerator. Pick x values. Uh, you already know a negative one, you're zero. Um, what is it for this function? For the second derivative, though, um, you'll be positive on the outside and you'll be positive on the inside. So that's going to end up as a positive value. But when you put a 1 in there, though, uh, yeah, you'll be negative on the outside and positive on the inside. So the product will be negative. Finally, for 100, negative on the outside, negative on the inside. Back to being positive. All right, great. Let's talk concavity. Concave up where your pluses are. Concave down where your negatives are. Concave up. I'm sorry, concave down from negative rad 3 to 0. Sorry, concave down from minus infinity to negative rad 3 and from 0 to rad 3. Concave up from negative rad 3 to 0 and from rad 3 to infinity. All right, great. It turns out that when you plug a rad 3 in, unfortunately, you have to go to a calculator, but you get something like about 2. You plug a negative rad 3 in, you get something like about 0.19. I don't like that because I'm going to a calculator to get that. I just want to make sure that things are kind of lined up right. And so uh, those are the values that you get. Uh, 0 is a point that we need 2. That's going to be, uh, we already know that when we plug a 0 in, we get a 1. We have change in concavity at negative rad 3. And so uh, we have change in concavity at 0. We have change in concavity at rad 3. So those will all lead to what we call inflection points. OK. Somehow my rad 3 became 1.8 1 1 instead of 1.9. <laughs> anyway, um, so we have this funny shape that helps us put the two piece of information that we found together. The first derivative signs and the second derivative signs. I like to put the first derivatives up top and the second derivatives down below. Just carry over where your sign changes were. Try not to make a mistake. The, the, uh, the markings on the 
number line are the uh, places where your second derivative is equal to zero and places where your first derivative is equal to zero. All right, that's just past the 10 minute mark, sorry. Um, a decrease in concave down, looks like that. A decrease in concave up, looks like that. An increase in concave up, looks like the other side. An increase in concave down, looks like that. Decrease in concave down is the other side. And decreasing concave up is back to that shape again. We have all these pieces to put together into the graph. Let me move out the way. With the points plotted for you, we have our graph. I guess I could have stayed there. <laughs> all right, and eventually, I, I, I only can show you a piece of it, but eventually you will approach that horizontal axis to y equals 1. So you can cross over a horizontal asymptote. You can't do that with a vertical, but you can do that with a horizontal. Don't worry. Okay. Well, thank you for watching. Sorry it went so long. Some of these can get difficult. It's a complicated process. Quotient rule really messes things up. It gets really messy, but it ends up being really factorable here and doable. Get everything out of the first derivative. Get everything out of the second derivative. Put them together and know the shape. Thanks for watching. My name is Nakai Rimmer. Please comment down below, like, and subscribe. And uh, let me know what other kind of videos you want to see. Uh, sorry about the typo. Determined. There's an extra N in there for some reason. <laughs> All right. I'm happy to help. See you in the next video. Take care. <laughs>